Crane says it has destroyed 50 Russian ammunition depots using HIMARS. Ukraine's armed forces have destroyed 20 pieces of Russian military equipment and three ammunition depots during the past 24 hours. The equipment destroyed includes one tank, three armored vehicles, eight artillery systems and mortars, one ATGM anti-tank system, for UAVs, and three vehicles. Three ammunition depots were also razed to the ground. In total, during the past day, the Russians attacked Ukrainian positions 23 times and carried out 717 attacks, as well as 23 airstrikes. Tarnovsky said artillery units from Ukraine's Tavria forces performed 1,236 fire missions during the day. Over the past day, Russian losses amounted to 248 people, 84 dead, 163 wounded, and one taken prisoner. Ukraine said on Monday its forces had used U.S. supplied HIMARS rocket systems to destroy 50 Russian ammunition depots since receiving the weapons last month. In comments on national television, Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov underlined the growing impact that the high-mobility artillery rocket systems, HIMARS, are having as Ukraine tries to repel Russia's invasion. This cuts their, Russian, logistical chains and takes away their ability to conduct active fighting and cover our armed forces with heavy shelling, Reznikov said. Reuters could not independently verify Reznikov's remarks. Russia did not immediately comment. Read more. Reznikov said Ukrainian artillery crews had conducted precise strikes on several bridges. He gave no details but was apparently referring to three river crossings in Russian-occupied Kherson region which local occupation authorities say were attacked by Himars over the past week. Read more. Reznikov also said Ukraine had received three Jeopard anti-aircraft armored fighting vehicles, the first of 15 expected, and that Kiev was expecting to take delivery of several dozen Leopard tanks. Russia says it has destroyed several of the HIMARS systems though Ukraine has denied this. In the latest such report, Russia's defense ministry said on Monday its forces had destroyed an ammunition depot for HIMARS systems in the Khmelnytsky region in western Ukraine. Read more. Ukrainian officials have said repeatedly that Western supplies of weapons are critical to Ukraine's military effort, and underlined the importance of the HIMARS because of Russia's artillery supremacy in terms of numbers and ammunition. Read more. HIMARS have a longer range and are more precise than the Soviet-era artillery that Ukraine had in its arsenal. Russia has criticized the United States in particular for providing Ukraine with instructors to help Ukrainian forces use HIMARS. Read more. Russia, which invaded Ukraine on February 24, has captured a chunk of territory in southern Ukraine and used its artillery supremacy in the east to make gradual territorial gains. Reporting by Natalia Zinitz, writing by Max Hunder, editing by Timothy Heritage Slash. The Ukrainian military has destroyed a large Russian ammunition depot in occupied Luhansk Oblast, Ukrainian journalist Denis Kazansky reported on social media on July 8. He shared footage from eyewitnesses who filmed the incident. Kazansky claims it occurred in the village of Sukhodilsk. Strong detonations are heard even in nearby Krasnodon, Sorokine, and Molotovardiysk, he claimed. This is far from the front line. Ukraine hasn't struck them there yet before. It seems that the shell hunger in the Russian army will grow a little in the near future. Kazansky also noted that these sorts of explosions at Russian ammo depots had not occurred since 2022, when, Ukraine, had just begun to use HIMARS to reach the, Russian invasion forces, rear. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine have not yet commented on this incident. Ukraine has destroyed a Russian ammunition warehouse in the occupied city of Dolomitin in Donetsk. Footage released by the country's armed forces shows the warehouse on fire after it was struck by HIMARS missiles on Sunday. Ukraine has been stepping up strikes on Russian weapons storage facilities as it seeks to overpower Moscow's forces in the counteroffensive. Kiev officials said this weekend that Ukraine has made an important breakthrough in its counteroffensive by breaching Russian lines near Zaporizhia. Ukraine's military shared a video on Wednesday of the fiery destruction of what it said was a massive ammunition dump used for Russia's Ka-52 helicopters, located near Bakhmut. In the aerial footage, first shared by Ukraine's special forces on Telegram, five trucks can be seen gathered around a small cluster of buildings by a body of water, 
the picture is clear enough to discern a single soldier transferring goods from one truck to another. Within seconds, the pair of trucks are engulfed in an explosion, followed by several others. Soon, the entire surrounding area is blazing and charred. Greetings from Himars, Ukraine's Ministry of Defense wrote in a post on X touting the bombardment on Thursday. Ukraine's MOD said the strike took place at the village of Myronivsky, which sits at the very edge of where the Luhansk region borders Donetsk. It's about 15 miles southeast of Bakhmut, where Ukrainian troops have been making small gains in recent days, according to an assessment by the U.S. think tank the Institute for the Study of War. According to Ukraine's special forces, reconnaissance officers spotted the site before passing its coordinates over to an artillery team. The blast site served as a storage depot for nine M127 Vikert guided missiles, which are used by Russian Ka-50 and Ka-52 helicopters, the mod said. Insider was unable to independently verify what was stored there, or exactly the artillery used. Laser beam guided Vikram missiles can travel up to 5 miles when launched from a helicopter and are highly effective against heavy armor. The Ka 52, known in Ukraine as Putin's Vulture, is considered one of the most powerful helicopters in the air. Early in Ukraine's counteroffensive, they exacted a heavy toll on Ukrainian armored vehicles, as insiders Ryan Pickrell reported. This status has made the helicopter a prime target for Ukrainian troops, including the 47th Separate Mechanized Brigade, which claims to have taken out eight of them. A Russian ammunition storage unit in northern Crimea has exploded, Russia's defense ministry said, injuring at least two people and prompting the evacuation of thousands of nearby residents. The ministry blamed the blast on sabotage. Local news organizations, meanwhile, reported a second explosion on August 16 at a nearby electrical substation in the Dzangkoi district of the Russian-occupied Black Sea Peninsula. It was unclear if the two incidents, which occurred around the same time, Ukrainian were related. officials avoided publicly or directly claiming responsibility for the incidents but some appeared to suggest Kiev was involved. Crimea was captured and annexed by Russia in 2014 and is still internationally recognized as Ukrainian territory, but Moscow has threatened severe reprisals for any attacks on the peninsula. The New York Times quoted an unnamed senior Ukrainian official as saying an elite Ukrainian military unit that was operating behind enemy lines was responsible for the explosions. The head of Zelensky's office, Andriy Yermak, wrote on Twitter that the Ukrainian armed forces continue the filigree demilitarization operation to fully rid our land of Russian invaders. Our soldiers are the best sponsors of a good mood, Yermak added, Crimea is Ukraine. Mykolo Podolyak, another top Zelensky aide, said on Twitter that the latest blasts were a reminder that the Crimea occupied by Russians is about warehouses, explosions and a high risk of death for invaders and thieves. What is stolen does not bring prosperity, Podolyak later told Ukrainian television. Video and photographs posted on Telegram and other social media showed a series of blasts and explosions in the district, which is not far from the administrative border with the mainland Ukrainian region of Kherson, now occupied by Russian forces. Russia's defense ministry said in a statement that the explosion occurred at a temporary storage facility for ammunition. The ministry later blamed the blast on unidentified saboteurs. On the morning of August 16, as a result of sabotage, a military warehouse near the village of Dzankoy was damaged. A number of civilian facilities, including power lines, a power plant, a railway track, as well as a number of residential buildings, were damaged, the ministry said in a statement. There are no serious casualties. Necessary measures are being taken to eliminate the consequences of sabotage, it added. Sergei Aksionov, the Russia-appointed governor for the peninsula, said two people had been injured and that railway traffic had been disrupted. About 3,000 people were also evacuated from a nearby village, he said. Rifat Chuborov, a prominent leader of the Crimean Tatar community, also said in a post on Facebook that the explosion occurred at an ammunition depot. Two local Crimea news organizations, Crimeinform and Crimean Wind, reported that a transformer at an electrical substation had also exploded or caught fire. Russia's energy ministry was quoted by news agencies as confirming a fire at the Crimea substation, but said it had been contained. No cause was given.
The incidents came roughly a week after a series of explosions tore through Russia's Sakai Air Base in a western district of Crimea, destroying a number of Russian warplanes. There's been no confirmation as to what caused those explosions, though satellite imagery showed extensive destruction at the base. Most observers suggest Ukrainian forces were responsible but Kiev has not claimed any responsibility. Mykolo Podolyak, a top aide to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, said in a post to Twitter that the latest blasts were a reminder that the Crimea occupied by Russians is about warehouses, explosions and a high risk of death for invaders and thieves. What is stolen does not bring prosperity, Podolyak later told Ukrainian television. The Dzankoy district is about 50 kilometers from the Russian-occupied region of Kherson in southern Ukraine. The Ukrainian defense forces are actively destroying artillery systems belonging to Russian occupiers on the Bakhmut front. Source, Ilya Yevlash, spokesperson for the Eastern Grouping of Forces, on air during the 24-7 National Joint Newscast. Quote, the enemy continues to conduct artillery attacks along the entire line of contact in the area of responsibility of the Eastern Grouping of Forces. Over the last day, the enemy fired over 500 times from its artillery systems, both tubed and rocket artillery, on the Bakhmut front. They used their army and tactical aircraft four times, and there were five combat engagements. We managed to kill 134 occupiers on this front and destroy a number of enemy artillery systems and heavy armored systems, infantry fighting vehicles, known as, self-propelled artillery system, Mstabi, Howitzer, and Pion, self-propelled gun, one of the most powerful systems in service in the Russian Federation. We also destroyed four Jayatsint, self-propelled guns, and four D-30 guns. This is the usual daily result. Yesterday we also destroyed about a division of enemy artillery systems, a division contains 12 to 24 artillery systems, the addition, on this front. Details, in addition, the Ukrainian defense forces also find ammunition storage points with Russian ammunition. Over the past 24 hours, seven storage points were destroyed on the Bakhmut front. Ukrainian electronic warfare units are also working successfully. Over the past day, 258 Russian UAV missions were intercepted. The Ukrainians destroyed four FPV drones, three Zala and an Orlan, 10 UAVs. Ukrainska Pravda is the place where you will find the most up-to-date information about everything related to the war in Ukraine. Ukraine has aggressively unleashed attacks in Zaporizhia this week. Zaporizhia, a Ukrainian district that Russia illegally annexed in September, is currently partially occupied by Russian forces. One week ago, the Kremlin announced Russia wouldn't seize any more territory from Ukraine, rather focusing on a return of its original goals of the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine while maintaining the four territories it illegally annexed in September. Zaporizhia is in southeastern Ukraine and is home to Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Ukraine hasn't folded its efforts in those areas and successfully liberated Kherson in November, although Russia continues to claim the district remains under Kremlin annexation. Lately, Ukrainian forces have focused their counteroffensive efforts in Zaporizhia. On Monday, Ukraine destroyed a key bridge Russian forces used to shuttle supplies across the Malakna River. Shortly after, on Wednesday, Ukraine struck again, this time targeting two Russian ammunition depots and destroying those as well. The enemy continues to suffer losses, the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine posted on Facebook on Thursday. According to the post, Ukrainian forces targeted the Tokmak, Polahy and Berdyansk settlements in Zaporizhia. The defense forces destroyed two enemy ammunition depots, two artillery systems with ammunition, as well as six units of military equipment of various types. More than 200 enemy servicemen were wounded, the post said. The post also said Ukrainian forces elicited 11 airstrikes on Russian troops, targeting service members, weapons and military equipment. Two strikes were unleashed on Russia's missile systems. Mark Kanchin, a senior advisor with the Center for Strategic and International Studies, told Newsweek that Ukraine will likely launch a winter offensive against Russia once the ground freezes, likely in January. Although it's impossible to know for certain where Ukraine will target its attacks, Kanchin said Russian forces in Zaporizhia may have potential weaknesses that make the region an ideal place for Ukraine to launch a counteroffensive. There's a long, thinly held front and there hasn't been a lot of activity up until now, 
Kanchin said of the Russian forces occupying Zaporizhia. That would be a logical place to attack. Kanchin said Ukraine also could be using the recent Zaporizhia attacks as a way to deceive Russia before striking stronger elsewhere. Earlier this week, Ukraine claimed the attack on the critical bridge, which crosses the Malakna River and connects the city of Melitopol and the village of Kostyantinivka in Zaporizhia. Newsweek previously reported that Russian news outlet Ria Novosti said the bridge was damaged but survived the attack. Ria Novosti reported explosives were placed on the bridge's support system, and although it didn't fall, traffic was suspended. Newsweek could not independently verify the outlet's statement about the bridge's condition. Experts previously told Newsweek that the bridge damage could cut Russians off from necessary supplies, such as food, adequate uniforms and weapons. Both Russia and Ukraine have attempted to use the cold winter weather as an ally by targeting their opponent in a way that could degrade soldier morale. The attack prevents Russian soldiers from receiving necessary supplies to continue fighting during the winter months. Russia also has targeted Ukraine in similar ways, launching attacks on the nation's critical infrastructure and shuttering the nation in darkness as its key energy sources were damaged or destroyed.